Morning, Morning, everyone. It's good to be inside and be nice and dry. I'm pretty excited that the two times we had to actually call the weather event to be inside, it actually worked out. Sometimes you do that and the sun comes out and everyone's like, well, why did we have to be inside? So it's wonderful and it's good to see everybody this morning. I'd like to welcome Pastor Joe back to our pulpit today. We're so good, it's so good to have you here and we're glad to see you again. I also want to remind everybody to keep in your prayers Nancy Sellers, who had her hip replaced, Peg Long, who had her knee replaced, and she's recuperating at her son's, and Shirley Yoder, who has been having problems with her arm. Again, I want to remind you about the congregational meeting that will take place on August 30th. You should have received all the information for that. If you have not, please let me know. We have envelopes here, and I'll make sure that you get all that information. That will be held August 30th after the service and we're hoping to do that outside but again if the weather's inclement we will be inside the building does anybody else have any announcements today happy birthday richard (laughs) anyone else all right if not kevin grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
The reading is from the 56th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keepeth, keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who ca gathers the outcast of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. I shall re now read this Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth. Let your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The Holy Gospel is the Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus left the place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her, and his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed immediately, instantly. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Grace, mercy, peace be to you, people of grace, from our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. All are welcome in God's name. Kevin, thank you for playing that. All are welcome in God's name. That word all has always uh, impacted me. Um, not always as powerfully as it might, but uh, in this reading for today, uh, it really uh, struck me. 
I'm not sure which Apollo movie it was, but <clears throat> one of the Apollo movies, and in real life, when the Apollo space capsule was in trouble, remember uh, you heard the phrase in the movie or on TV, um, Houston, we have a problem. And I want to say to the you, Grace Church, this morning, Grace Church, we have a problem. We have a problem because we have a story about Jesus, which is so uncharacteristic of Jesus. He actually literally, as this woman comes begging, shouting for help. The, the Greek verb there is very clear. She's crying out to him, crying out to him for help. And he says, but I'm not sent to you. I'm sent to Israel to serve Israel, to save Israel. It's not fair, Jesus said, to take the bread from children and give it to the dogs. If we are not lifelong Christians, and if we have not heard that story for a long time, we might be totally turned off to Jesus, calling a woman a dog. So this text, when I say, Grace, we have a problem, I think maybe a different way to say that is, Grace, we have a challenge. Because in this text, in this difficult, challenging, and in some ways painful text, is hidden a gem, part of the gospel, part of what we heard in the prelude, part of what God calls us to do and to be in the world, to extend the grace and mercy and love of God to all people. The church has dealt with this difficult text in different ways. One way is to say that Jesus was testing her faith. In other words, Jesus knew that she would, in the end, ask for grace for the healing of her daughter and that Jesus would give it, but he wanted her to express faith first. I know you can do it, Lord. That's one interpretation. Another interpretation is uh, that the word there, dogs, is really the word in Greek for puppies. So that somehow it makes it sound, you know, not so bad. It's, it's not right for the master to take bread from the children and give it to the puppies. But that has its own difficulties because it looks like in Greek, the, the word that makes dog into puppy really is Jesus is talking about healing the girl herself, not the woman, but the little girl. So that interpretation doesn't quite uh, fit either. And, you know, at the extreme, there are some theologians who say this never happened. This was a story that uh, Matthew invented from Mark, and both of them were just trying to say that the gospel of God's grace was not limited, but it was expansive and would go to all people. And that Jesus never really said this phrase, you know, it's not right to take children's bread and give it to the dogs. However we look at it, I think that Pastor David Lose, who I follow closely, and someday I need to tell him how many times I have learned from him and shared with congregations some of the wisdom he brings into my life, he suggests that what we need to see in this gospel is not, not a focus on the conversation so much between Jesus and the woman, but to ask ourselves a question that's challenging. Could Jesus himself not fully understood his own mission? Jesus heard as we heard because he heard the scriptures, God, be merciful to us. Let your way be known on the earth. You're saving health to all nations. Let all the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Jesus heard that, just like you and I hear it over and over. God's grace was not limited to Israel. Or another way to think of it is, Israel was larger than Israel. God wasn't only concerned with the Jewish people. He called the Jewish people, he called Abraham and Sarah, for what purpose? That you may be a blessing to all generations. 
See that, that word all, so tiny, isn't it? Three letters. But it's expansive. So I have been challenged by Pastor Los, and I, as I think about this text more and more, I ask that question, could Jesus learn that his mission was larger than he originally thought? That sort of challenges our theology, right? Because we believe Jesus is God and God knows all things. And, but yet we read in the scriptures that when Jesus was born, it says he grew in stature, his body grew, and wisdom. Could this woman, could this outsider, brought to Jesus a vision of who he was and what he needed to be doing and what the cross was going to mean, not only for him, but for all people? I like that. I like that question and I like that idea that Jesus was open to grow and to learn and the woman challenged him. And Jesus himself changed his mind. The bread that was for the children was still for the children, but it was for all children, not just Israelite children. It was a radical way of looking at God's grace for the world. And people of grace, church here in Hatfield, I want to challenge you as I feel God is challenging me to ask again, what does that mean to be a church for all people? I do believe that it is not easy to be a church for all people. When I was pastor at St. Peter's in Hilltown, which I loved, and which many of you reminded me is Bucks County and this is Montgomery County, I love that. Thank you. That meant you were listening to me last two weeks ago. But I know at St. Peter's, we had a habit, you know. We were sort of back in off Hilltown Pike, and Sue, our secretary, who I'm going to have lunch with her and her, her husband today, Sue was often at the church by herself during the week. And so when strangers would appear at the door knocking, and especially if they didn't look like they belonged in Hilltown, if you get my drift, Sue would be afraid, and I don't blame her. She would be afraid to approach the door, and she would talk to them through the crack. I have no idea who this person is and what they might try to do. Since I left, they finally have now a, an alarm system so that if for some reason something happens, Sue can call for help. It's not easy to be the church for all people. When I left St. Peter's and moved to St. Michael's in Kensington, one of the first questions I had was, what do I do if people come during the week for food? Because they had a big food ministry. We, we, we fed over 70 families a week. Twice a year, we fed over 700 people at Thanksgiving and at a summer picnic. We had a lot of people. We had a huge food pantry. I encourage you. I know you support food pantries in the city. It is so needed. You would not believe how needed it really is. But I remember uh, Thursday was their food pantry day. And I said to them, well, what happens if people come on Monday? And they said to me, what do you mean? I said, well... Somebody knocks on the door on Monday looking for food. What do I do? They said, give them food. What do you mean, what do you do? I, I said, open the door. They said, yeah, open the door and pray. <laughs> open the door and pray. We were right next to that, that Kensington Avenue where you hear about all those shootings. And, and um, unfortunately, yes, I had a funeral just last month for one of the young men in the congregation who lost his life in, in that street. Open the door, the people said to me. And so you better believe I prayed every time I went to that church because I opened that door. It's scary to open the door to people that are different than us, people that have needs, and people that are broken. Master, Jesus, my daughter is possessed by evil. We don't necessarily believe in demons anymore. We don't think about 
demons, usually we don't, think about demons riding around in red suits with pokers and things like this. But we shouldn't fool ourselves or we shouldn't act like there isn't evil in the world. Possessing people. Possessing people. And the church needs to be there as Jesus was to respond, to open the door, to say, yes, you, you are the reason I came. You are the reason Grace Church is here. And that means we need to ask some prayerfully deep questions for ourselves and for the church. Can we, like Jesus, continue to learn? Can we, like Jesus, have our vision of mission change? Look at the changes the Lutheran Church has been through. I'm not even looking at the other churches. I'm looking at the ELCA. Look at the changes we've been through and how difficult and how painful at times it is to change, to open the door to strangers, to people that are not like us. It's a challenge. It was a challenge for Jesus, and it's a challenge for us. But here's the good news. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus who lives within us and sustains us and leads us and guides us, that Holy Spirit is at work in our churches, helping us to open doors that are difficult and at times scary and frightening. My brothers and sisters, We, of all people, should know that word, all, is so small and yet so expansive. Every time we celebrate Holy Communion, besides the awesome words, this is my body, this is my blood, those are awesome words. But what strikes me as the pastor when I have the privilege of celebrating Holy Communion are those words, given and shed for you and for all people, so that we may have 25, we may have 40, we may have 200 people at the table that Sunday. But what is given and shed is not only for those who gather, but for all people. And that's where the hard work comes in. How do we open those doors? One suggestion I have for you and for myself this week is to approach someone not a stranger, but approach someone you know. It might be a child, a grandchild, a niece, nephew, sister, brother, and say, if they're not coming to the table, if they're not coming to Jesus, say to them, why not? Why is it that you, that you don't uh, come, to, come to church? Why, why is it that church doesn't matter to you? All churches, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist, they're all, we are all struggling with attendance and with membership. I think we need to ask the hard question of people and then be braced for the answers that we're going to hear. Why aren't you coming? The woman came to Jesus because she believed he had something she needed. Could it be that some people are not coming and knocking on the church door because They don't either believe or know that the church has something they need. It could be. So I think I'm going to suggest this week that each of us intentionally pick at least one person. Not not to argue and not to cajole and not to make them feel bad, but to simply say, you know, I, I go to church. I know you don't go to church. Is there a reason you don't go to church? I'd be surprised at the answers you received. The young man at at Kensington, in Kensington, that was shot and killed a little bit over a month ago, he would come with his mom to events, but never come to worship. And he would talk about God, and he had served a couple tours of duty in Afghanistan, and uh, was very supportive of St. Michael's ministry, but he would not worship. And finally, I just said to him one day, I said, Tim, why is it that you don't come to worship? And he said to me, oh, pastor, you wouldn't want me in your, you wouldn't want me at worship. And I said, why? And he said, I'll tell you someday. And this went on for a couple of months and I asked again, what? 
is this the time? Can you tell me why now? And he said, well, I did some things I shouldn't have done in Afghanistan. And I said, Timothy, we have all done stuff we shouldn't have done. And if that were a requirement, none of us would be in church. And he said, well, the bigger issue is I'm gay. And I said, Timothy, <laughs> dear Timothy, son of God, come to church. You will be welcomed. You will be loved. You will be hugged. You will be embraced. And he came to church. And he started coming to church. And he came. He came regularly. I'm so glad that we had that conversation. You can assume all kinds of reasons why people don't come to church. But until we ask, we might not get an answer. And we might, might not be able to proclaim the good news that this love and grace that we share here in word and sacrament is for all people. Yes, Timothy, for you. Yes, Betty and Sally and, and John and Walter, it's for you. Help me, help me, as we should all pray. Help us, God, to be the church of welcome and of good news, that this grace is not just for us, but it was and is for all people. If Jesus could learn that and give his life for that, certainly people of grace. You and I can, can do that with the help of God as well. In Jesus' holy, blessed, welcoming, empowering, inclusive name. Amen.
confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, you have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth may flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and fresh, refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy. We call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all that you have created. Lord, in your mercy. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. Lord, in your mercy. If you, in you, we live and move and have our being. Grant grace, the congregation that makes us one, the grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for the mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the offerings we bring. Our ordinary gifts seem small when we stand in your presence. Multiply the gifts we are able to offer to make them abundant, not merely enough, that you may be seen through us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear now the prayers of our hearts as we offer them before you both silently and aloud. Holy and gracious God, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity we've had these two times to gather to hear your word, to be strengthened by you, and to be encouraged in our ministries. I give special thanks for the people of grace, for this ministry, for those who lead and those who follow, for all those who work to bring your peace and justice in this and every place. Be with your church, Lord, here and around the world as it seeks to hear your word and to obey you in its, your teachings and follow Jesus, your son, in the way of holiness and righteousness and goodness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Your eternal promises are more than what we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, Join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And Does everybody know the sign language sign for I love you? I-L-Y. That's another way to share God's peace with each other.
neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in the eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen.